All right, this is a massive multi-part PSA for anyone using DaVinci Resolve, uh, specifically those who have jumped to Resolve 19, but maybe we'll get to that. <laughs> PSA number one, when is the last time you cleared out your render cache? If you don't even know what that is, and you've been using Resolve for a while, we need to talk about it right now, okay. <laughs> On a DaVinci Resolve timeline, under the playback menu, you have a few options. You've got render cache and options to delete your render cache. Your render cache is probably off by default unless you individually turn it on for specific effects. And then you also have smart and user. I have a video on my timeline that I made previously and I tossed this binoculars effect on there. And when a playback render cache is set to smart, it recognizes it, that effects are going on, and uh, I have this blue bar over the entire thing, meaning that clip is now cached. So what Resolve is actually doing when it generates that uh, render cache clip is that it is uh, taking that and repackaging it as a slightly uh, friendlier format, or if the effects on that clip are something that it can't process in real time, it will process pre-render that through so you can watch it through smoothly. But in that process, it creates a file that then takes up space on your hard drive of your computer. And in long video projects, maybe with lots of effects or lots of intense color grading, you can get uh, lots of these clips that need to be run through your render cache. It can become an essential part of your workflow. But now you have the problem potential problem of all of those pre-rendered clips just sitting on your hard drive. And especially once your project is done, you don't need those anymore. In the past, the best way to delete all of these was to come up to file, project settings, scroll down to where you have your working folders and uh, cache files location. You can navigate to this in just like your Windows browser explorer page thing. Delete all the folders there and you'd be good. But in 18.5 of Resolve, we got this nifty option in playback, delete render cache, manage cache data. It loads up this cool menu. You can choose uh, which of your libraries, um, if you're all on local or cloud or all of them, if it's a mix. And then, especially if you sort by render cache, then at the top here, then I can see that I've got a few projects with multiple uh, gigabytes of cached files that now I could delete, get all that space on my hard drive back. Now, brief aside to say that I think for a lot of people, there is no reason to just crank render cache on all the time, try to cache everything, keep that up to date. Cache is most useful when you are caching something that cannot play back in real time otherwise. And for light effects, you know, titles, transitions, some of that stuff, uh, a lot of you probably won't need render cache, but if you do need it, it's important that you know where it is. But especially when we're talking about managing this space, it's better just to not make all these new files if you're just gonna delete them anyway and if they're not actually helping your workflow. And additionally, um, if you are trying to make all these files while you're still editing in your project, your computer is trying to do multiple stuff at once, that's not fun. Now in this folder, you could select any of these projects, clear them out with clear cache, but there's something else I wanna talk about first. I noticed when I updated to DaVinci Resolve 19 uh, that when I started uh, creating new projects that all of a sudden my default project settings for new projects, you know, I was editing in 4K 30 frames a second for this kind of stuff. I noticed that the new default was sort of reset to just 1080 24 frames a second. And while it's not that much of a hassle to either change it on an individual basis or set new uh, project settings just for resolution, um, that sort of prompted my mind to check on another setting also connected to render cache. If I go back to file project settings, then right before or right above those working folder sections, I have optimized media and render cache. And here with this reset default settings, that uh, changed back my render cache format to uncompressed 10 bit. This I believe is the default for all Windows installations, I believe on Mac it defaults to ProRes because the licensing stuff. And as I understand it, there are a few pretty good reasons why you don't want to leave this on uncompressed 10 bit, not the least of which uh, being storage. Now I was more confident on this before I did some quick tests because I duplicated this timeline. I created cache files um, with several different flavors of this render cache format. In the past, I'd recommended either setting this to a DNX HRSQ or DNX HRLB. And in this video, I'm officially going to recommend DNX, DNX HRSQ. And, and by the way, we're gonna hop around it a little bit, but by the way, once you change that, and if you change your timeline resolution back to whatever you prefer, if you come up to these three dots, you can set your current settings as the default preset so that any new project will automatically have those settings in place. Or you can just save the current settings as a, a new preset in general where you can like uh, choose to load it up 
uh, per on a per project basis. But talking about these files, so I did very unscientific tests, and this might even be something I try to run by, maybe post on the Black Magic forums or something. Because um, if I go back to that delete render cache, manage cache data, if I sort by name and come down to this video, this YT265, um, I have a few different versions and they're interesting. So this first one, I did this test. This is a 4K clip, but on just a 1080 timeline. This was uncompressed 10 bit, 14 gigabytes. I changed that to DNXR HQ and that got down to under 10 gigabytes, but both this test two and test three, test two was DNXR LB, and test three was one of the, the, the GoPro Cineform, the, the 10 bit flavor of that. Those are both at like 30 gigabytes. So long story short, DNX, uh, DNX HR SQ on Windows machines looks to save you the uh, least amount of space, but I believe uh, DNX HR LB should be even less. So I might ask someone about this. If you know more about this and you can help us out in the comments, go for it. But especially for this cache kind of thing, and hey, even right now, I can go and delete all of those cache files. Look, tens of thousands of files of all of these frames that got sent there, and we are clearing all of those out. So just a quick video going over a few things. It's always a good time to remind people to clear out their render cache. If you updated to 19, um, did it also reset your default project settings? And whether it did or did not, especially if you're on a Windows machine, uh, changing that away from uncompressed 10-bit um, might help you out, especially when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, all this extra render cache space on your hard drive. And finally, that last little uh, uh, tip was, hey, render cache is great. Don't use it if you don't have to. <laughs> I always love reminding people to clear out their render cache. If you do clear out your render cache, uh, drop the total size of the files you're clearing in the uh, comment section. That's always really fun to see. People regularly save or reclaim hundreds of gigabytes of space on their hard drives um, after every video I make about this stuff. So always do that. Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.